On my previous video, on the psychology of learning organic chemistry, I outlined techniques for learning facts. And I also said that facts are the first step to getting going. The second step is concepts, and that's what I will talk about today. And in covering this, I'm going to mention one of the big mistakes that many students make in the study of organic chemistry. So to hang this discussion on a chemical framework, let's consider just homologating a carbon chain. And I've got another video on that in another series about Lego bricks in organic chemistry. And please refer to that if you're not sure. So if we take a methyl group and we add hydride to it, then we get methane. If we take that methyl, strictly a methyl radical, and add a CH2 to it, we get an ethyl radical. And if we take that ethyl radical and we add hydrogen to that, we get ethane. If we add methyl to that, we get propane. And if we add another CH2, we get a propyl radical. We can keep going on and on like this. And let's do that for 10 carbons. You see, each time we add a methyl or hydrogen, it's a one electron donor. Each time we add a CH2, it's a two electron donor, gives us another radical. What is a fact and what is a concept here? For sure, the names of the hydrocarbon, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane, are facts. You can't guess those. I don't care how clever you are, you'll never come up with those names. So that's a fact that you need to digest. But let's say you have remembered those facts. Then if I say to you, well, CH3, CH2 dot is an ethyl radical, then you cannot just extrapolate the concept and tell me what a propyl, butyl, pentyl, hexyl, heptyle, octyle, nonyl, decyl radical will look like. You see, the fact started us off and the concept took us much further. This is the mistake that students make. Learning concepts is sometimes hard and it's difficult to get going. People will say, oh, I don't really understand that and I'm not going to, I'll just learn these names. But the problem is, without learning the concepts, a mind will be overwhelmed by all the different things you would have to learn in organic chemistry. And I see this over and over again. Students want to learn the answer to one question, but they don't want to learn the conceptual basis behind extrapolating that concept to unfamiliar situations. I propose to you that we take a butyl radical and we add OH dot a hydroxyl radical to the end of it. And then I tell you that that functional group is an alcohol. And we could call it butyl alcohol. And to be a little bit more specific, because the OH is connected on the first carbon, we could call it one butyl alcohol. And then I might tell you, really, a more rigorous name would be one butanol. Then, if I ask you, well, what's the structure of one hexanol, or one heptanol, or one octanol, or one decanol? You could work it out, because you've got the concept there. And then I make it a little bit difficult. I work in another concept that we've already covered in my Lego Bricks video, if you don't already know. Let's suppose we have a nine carbon chain. But instead of putting the OH group on the end, we count three carbons in, and we put it on the third carbon. That's going to be a nonanol, but it's not one anymore. It will be three nonanol. But don't forget the concept of Lego bricks and organic chemistry, and the valency of carbon being four in the neutral state. So we can't attach that OH to a CH2, it can only be attached to a CH or a similar group. So there you have it, you see. We didn't know the structure of 
three non and all before we started this, perhaps, but we can figure it out from the concepts. And you see, once you've got the feel for the concepts, then we can extrapolate even more. If I tell you the structure of hexile or heptile amine, one hexile or heptile amine, you can figure out, well, that's an amine functional group. And if I ask you then to draw an isomer of that, where the amine is attached to not the end carbon, but another one, you could do that as well. But you must remember, of course, to change the CH2, the methylene, where the amine is attached, to a methine. So in terms of psychology then, what's the, the correct approach to learning concepts? First of all, you have to understand them any way you can. That might mean reading a textbook, going to a lecture, or asking the professor, or asking friends, looking at a YouTube video like this, until, ah, the light bulb goes on, you get it. The second stage then is explaining that to somebody else in the simplest possible terms. That's a test. If you can't do that, you don't really understand the concept, you should go back again and try harder to understand it. And the third stage is applying that concept over and over again to unfamiliar situations. And that's a great thing because concepts in organic chemistry are based on facts, but they lead to other concepts. One thing leads to another, and that's empowering. Once a student gets into the mindset of understanding concepts and then applying them, and feeling comfortable with situations they've not quite seen yet, then that is a big breakthrough. I think there's a staircase for learning organic chemistry. And at the bottom of the stairs is learning fact. And probably, if you don't know any facts, D. If you know the facts but can't grasp the concepts, then perhaps a student will get a C. A student who understands the concepts can apply them a little bit, quite well, will get a B. But the student who masters the concepts and can apply them in almost any situations deserves an A because that's the pinnacle of learning organic chemistry. Thank you for listening. I'm developing videos like this on the psychology of learning organic chemistry and others on fundamental chemistry to graft into an electronic book that will be available soon. The four workbooks, Sophomore Organic Chemistry by Inquisition 1 and 2, are available as hard copies from Amazon and from www.byinquisition.org, where the answers can also be found.